warm good afternoon to all respected principal and chief organizer of this webinar dr usha vk madam professor and hod department of psychiatry government td medical college alappuzha dr vargis p punnu sir director as counseling center mr cg anthony sir our former principal dr valsalma joseph madam teachers and students from all government nursing colleges of kerala thank you for joining our live today please to inform you that we are live on you youtube as well on behalf of the department of mental health nursing government college of nursing i welcome you all to this webinar on impact of covid 19 and related lockdown issues on the psychological well being of students before we begin let me take a moment to specially mention the efforts taken by our prin principal dr usha vk madam we cannot thank her enough for her guidance in making this webinar possible what used to be the normal have changed so much during this pandemic that the psychological departments all over the world expresses huge concern over the mental health of everyone especially students from attending virtual classes interacting with teachers on a screen to physical distancing it's important to talk about the way universities and schools are responding to such unprecedented times and the psychological challenges like depression stress worry anxiety owing to uncertainty that students are now facing in the light of corona virus now let me introduce our resource persons dr vargis p punus who handled the first session is the head of the department department of psychiatry government td medical college alappuzha sir has served as a president of indian psychiatric society kerala state chapter he was also the associate editor of indian journal of social psychiatry and editor of kerala journal of psychiatry he was awarded the dr j s satyadas award for eminent medical teacher and the kadolikit award for university teachers sir has published more than 30 scientific papers in the index journals we are grateful to have you with us sir i also welcome mr cg anthony sir director as counseling center mr cg anthony holds ma in psychology msw mphil and currently serves as the course director of the tada institute mr cg anthony will lead the second session today we are pleased to have you on our panel sir so we begin the first session psychological effect of covid-19 and related lockdown on students over to you dr vargi sir thank you thank you very much for uh, inviting me mariya uh, madam usha madam balsam i think balsam madam is also in the group so kottayam uh, college of nursing kottayam has been uh, very close to my heart so i am very happy that i am invited by you uh, for this seminar on covid especially the psychological aspects of covid on uh, students mental health of students are uh, affected uh, in a large way uh, by covid and its uh, result and lockdown uh, just pause for a moment let me start um, sharing the slide uh, are the slides visible slides pistol is it yes sir is it visible visible sir yeah. yes sir yeah so uh, when lockdown was declared uh, the initial response from the st students it's interesting to note that uh, they responded with uh, uh, in a happy manner holiday mood no exams but as the lockdown progressed they began to experience the disconnect from friends and their favored and loved activities and the lockdown compelled them to remain with the family even though we speak about quality time spent with family 
is a beneficial thing. But students, especially the adolescents, may find it uh, a little boring. And especially they have to bear with the expressed emotions from the parents. Frequently advising them, intruding into their personal space and personal time. So that definitely made a big emotional problem for the students and especially for the adolescents. And the new normals like uh, the online learning, it was a curious thing for the students. First. So they welcomed it, but as this went by, they had a lot of adaptation issues with the new normals. And finally, as the days turned into months, a lot of frustrations resulting from uncertainty when this will be over. So that was the initial student's response and how it evolved over the time. And we have to keep in mind that these responses are not universal for the entire student community. One of the very important determining factors is the developmental stage of the student. So the responses, psychological responses for a primary school student is entirely different from that of a student who is in plus two or doing his degree. So the developmental stage of the student is a very important determining factor. And there were parental concerns as well. And of course, worry regarding academics, worry over the altered sleep cycle of the children, and they had concerns of excessive internet and electronic gadget use. Parents were all the way fighting with their children to stop watching uh, in using internet and gadgets and now they are forced to provide them and many parents have in fact lost control for the internet uh, time and the internet related activities. Children are not confining themselves to the academic related activities. And the thirdly the teachers concerned. Our education system was totally unprepared for such a sudden change and the skill technical skill deficits of teachers uh, became very evident and our infrastructural deficiencies was also contributing to that. All on a sudden they had to shift to the online teaching which is a really different world game. And they tried or they're even trying to uh, replicate what is happening in the classroom to the online rooms, uh, which is uh, meeting with a lot of frustrations among uh, students as well as teachers. And the digital debate became very evident. The digital, the disadvantage to the financially backward students and uh, uh, students who, uh, whose residences are located away from the uh, urban centers where connectivity is poor, etc. So the, the infrastructural problems, the loss of personal supervision by teachers. The teacher-student relationship is a very important component of uh, education. It is not just the curriculum or not, not how much of portions are covered. It is the personal relationship between the teacher and student, which really matters. Uh, uh, so all these were uh, toppled over a very short period of time. So these are the important concerns. I will just tell you three scenarios. So these are actual uh, cases which came to our attention. And these three cases, I, uh, uh, I, they exemplify what actually are the mental health problems or psychological uh, disorders uh, our students are going through. Look at this. Uh, uh, is a 15 year old, uh, past tense added. He was a good student till the previous, everything was fine in the previous year. He was described by his uh, parents and teachers as a very punctual, systematic, obedient, and a very lovable and helpful guy. But uh, the COVID lockdown and the school lockdown everything resulted in an unhappy boy who was not at all happy with the way exams were conducted they did not finish the portions provisions were not done he was a very unhappy child and the present problem the reason why he is brought to the clinic is that he is off late he is very angry with the parents and he refuses to attend the online classes it's a very uh, different from his previous usual self and he sleeps more. And when his, some of his demands are frustrated or when parents are uh, trying to uh, help him, he's threatening them even with self-harm. So it's a scenario uh, which is not unusual in mental health psychiatric clinics after the coach. 
look at scenario 2 11 standard girl child rabida she has taken up biology group with an aspiration to take up some medical courses and she is parallel to her plus two she is doing her need coaching as well so everything was fine and she was referred by her class teacher for professional help because she was definitely showing an academic decline her ranks were falling she was attending a very competitive institution so during the initial months she was scoring well but over the last few tests, the scores are consistently low and she is confused and the family is also confused whether to give up the parallel need coaching and focus only on the so they thought that a professional opinion would be helpful to sort out these issues and on talking to the child it was evident that apart from the the presented academic problem she had excessive worry about contracting COVID. She was repeatedly cleaning washing and bathing and she was taking more time for that and she also has uh, uh, developed certain food fats excessive concern about weight gain and she was even in the middle of the night she was keeping herself awake and engaging in severe physical exercise so that so the presenting complaint was an academic problem but these kind of emotional and behavioral problems are evident on uh, assessment of the child and look at the third and the last scenario it's an older student 22 year old she just completed aruna just completed her btech and she was very happy the family was very very proud about her for uh, her selection from camps interview respecting to join but the lockdown changed the scenario the company informed that they're not they kept her on hold job entry is delayed indefinitely and now they are confused the family is forcing her to, to take up the mtech or pg for which she is not very inclined and they are also putting pressure on her to get into some bank employment coaching etc so she she herself wanted to uh, volunteer for a consultation because she felt moody and happy and she was getting episodes of palpitation breathlessness and giddiness for which medical consultations were done but uh, uh, it turned out to be negative for a medical problem so this is the third scenario so i am uh, uh, bringing uh, this case scenarios to your attention just to highlight the uh, the different uh, modes in which emotional problems and psychological disorders can pop up especially in this background of so for uh, to cut our discussion in short uh, this major psychological problems which can be uh, uh, which usually arises can be grouped into the five groups one of course is the adjustment disorders which are obviously uh, uh, students find it difficult to cope with the sudden change in the environment, which was uh, least anticipated. Second is the group of anxiety disorders. People sometimes confuse between stress-related disorders and anxiety disorders. I think, I hope I can bring in some clarity with regard to that as we go along. The third is the group of depressive disorders, which may be a newly emerging one or maybe has become more evident. Uh, mild depressive symptoms which have become more evident after all this uh, onset of this uh, environmental change. And fourth is addictive disorders, especially addiction to gadgets uh, rather than chemicals. And the problem, uh, sleep cycle disruptions. So uh, these are the uh, five major uh, and we are all medical professionals and i would suggest that all these disorders are better understood and they are viewed as nervous system responses to a sudden change in the attributing something to the child's personal uh, will or uh, character it is better for a and if you And that these problems are resulting from some dysfunction of the brain responses or nervous system responses. But you can imagine these problems are arising the motor regulation system resulting in stress and the addictive type of problems. And the fear circuit is resulting in anxiety disorders. So our brain is a very sensitive organ. The brain will respond to all these uh, 
uh, environmental changes, especially when they are very significant and when they are sustained and when the uncertainty is prevailing as a common and persistent denominator. So quickly moving on to the adjustment disorders. Adjustment disorder, the basic concept is that the development of emotional and behavioral symptoms in response to stresses within the within three months. So they have given an arbitrary cutoff point of three months. Within three months of onset of a stressor, some kind of emotional and behavioral symptoms are appearing, which can be attributed to the stress. And symptoms produce market distress. And that again should result in significant impairment in social occupation. And for since we are discussing about students, their academic areas of function, which are areas in which an individual is functioning, that area is significantly impaired. And of course, one has to rule out other mental disorders like anxiety disorders and depressive disorders, which come up higher in the higher. So this is the adjustment disorders uh, which we come across. And second is anxiety disorders. Even though I have listed all anxiety disorders, the, the type of anxiety disorders which uh, we do come across are mostly, especially with regard to uh, in the background of this whole lockdown is uh, panic, panic attacks and panic disorders. And of course, there is an exacerbation of uh, uh, generalized anxiety disorder, especially in students who are only prone for anxiety. So they were managing, but this particular situation has uh, exacerbated or brought to clinical attention their anxiety. Uh, again, I am afraid, so now things are children with school phobia resulting from separation anxiety disorder may find this COVID lockdown period and absence from school as a risk. So they'll be a happy lot. But the real problem, uh, uh, we anticipate that these things can become an important problem once the school reopens. After a long period of uh, holidays and mining at home. So, so there's an, maybe an epidemic of school phobias and suppression anxiety disorder can be expected. Social phobias. Again, children with social school is a natural environment, uh, which can, uh, 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 can be a therapeutic uh, environment to treat the social phobia in a natural way. So that natural environment is uh, uh, lacking now. Uh, so uh, one can only speculate. And finally, I would like to focus on the last one, the illness anxiety disorder, uh, which uh, is not uh, actually grouped under uh, anxiety disorders in DSM. Uh, it is grouped under somatic syndrome disorder, but for today's discussion, I thought that it would be appropriate to group illness anxiety disorder, excessive worry and concern whether uh, one might get uh, COVID infection or other types of infection. So excessive worry, illness anxiety disorder has emerged as a problem in uh, our clinical practice. That is preoccupation with occurring a serious illness here, COVID infection, of course. And there is a high level of anxiety about health. They are easily alarmed about personal health status. Not only among themselves, it can even extend to, for young children, it can extend to their parents or their caregivers. And parents go out and come back, many children, are, many a time they are embarrassed and ashamed to tell it, voice it. But many children are tormented by this excessive fear and high level of anxiety about health and safety of their, not only them, of their parents as well. And resulting in performance of excessive health related behavior, like repeated checking of the body, and they may exhibit even maladaptive avoidance. The illness anxiety disorder, basically two types. One is the care seeking type and the care avoidant type. So people with excessive anxiety may handle their problems either by frequently seeking medical help or avoiding medical help. Adequate medical help. So one, this is a problem which we are encountering. Uh, maybe then <laughs> that is the depressive disorder. Uh, I'm sure that all of you know what is the basic concept of depression. Uh, uh, we don't have time to go into the details of that, but a low mood, a persistent low mood, loss of interest, inability to enjoy pleasure, in addition to alteration of biological functions like sleep and appetite. For students, it is very important to have concentration, concentration impairment, which could be a part of uh, depression, which can result in academic impairment in children. And I should remind you about the atypical features of depression in childhood. In students, it may present as an anger outburst irritability, which is not there in adults. So an anger outburst or undue irritability from the part of the child is very likely to be uh, misidentified or misdiagnosed as something else, like a contact problem or an oppositional behavior, etc. One, one need to consider the possibility of depression, which is a very eminently treatable condition uh, and it should be identified and treated as such. Sleep cycle disruption, I'm sure that anyone of you having 
school going children in your own homes will be are very aware of this what happens to the sleep cycle of our children once the lockdown started they sleep at the time which they desire and they wake up at any time the 24 hour cycle which is set by the nature is totally disrupted late sleep and waking up late the biological clock has been disrupted and this is very likely to result in circadian rhythm sleep wake disorder we are yet to see the effects even now we can see a lot of students having a circadian sleep wake disorder the delayed type of circadian whether it will bounce back to normal or whether because of the prolonged lockdown whether it will remain as a relatively permanent problem only we can wait and see and the use of internet and digital devices for academic purposes have definitely contributed to the sleep cycle disruption uh, and as i mentioned at the outset the online classes have made a consistent parent control difficult so even when children not in the period of lockdown when they uh, came to us for uh, sleep cycle disruption one of the advices was sleep hygiene principles where parents were encouraged to take control and limit uh, or schedule the use of um, uh, electronic devices now what happened parents are helpless and they are uh, it's difficult for parents to make a consistent control over this behavior and this has resulted in internet addiction a tab which is not approved by dsm uh, but uh, icd level is almost on the verge of accepting it excessive use of internet or digital devices inability to control resulting in sleep disruption uh, they are annoyed by external efforts almost like an addiction to chemical substances uh, results in significant distress and impairment i don't know by the time lockdown is over what percentage proportion of our students might develop this problem so again wait and see uh, before we uh, come to the conclusion slides uh, just uh, a few points why students differ in their psychological responses this is something which parents and teachers ask us why only this child why only the other the other child is not having a problem so there are three important points to what makes this difference one is the personality or temperamental factor each child is different so the temperament will determine to a great extent uh, what would be the type of psychological responses for a different situation so for example a child with clusters what we call as cluster c personality traits that means a very perfectionistic very punctual anandastic obsessional child the child will be in the good books of teachers and parents a model child there is a need for perfection he needs to be the right person but the problem is the lack of flexibility and in a very fluid and uncertain situation like covid lockdown these are the type of children their personality traits their uh, their temperamental factors make life very very distressing for them and and look at another child with an uh, a very good capacity for resilience resilience means an ability to bounce back from adversities and that may act like a protective factor so i have given these two examples extreme ex examples most of the children fall somewhere in between uh, these protective factors and factors which make them vulnerable so that is the temperamental factor make uh, a child uh, is, uh, emotional responses very unique second thing is pre existing disorders see around 20% of the normally school going children have a, 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 a either a neurodevelopmental disorder or an emotional disorder but a very tiny fragment is uh, identified as such so many pre existing disorders like for example autistic spectrum disorders classical autism will not be missed by anyone but children with autistic traits children with uh, uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder mostly in the subclinical range children with specific learning disorder and their profile will be different when they are exposed to a very demanding and a challenging situation like this. again children with subclinical anxiety disorders or uh, uh, mood disorders i already made a mention about separation anxiety disorder and social phobia so they might like this period but uh, the, the, the this can have a uh, adverse effect on their uh, ultimate outcome so pre existing disorders can become manifest or they may be worsened they may be exacerbated by covid lockdown situation and the third factor which make the individual difference is the quality of support system so some parents are with their inherent uh, healthy parenting styles and parenting quality can be uh, they may provide a protective environment 
Similarly, some schools are uh, flexible and accommodative with regard to the uh, uh, needs of the children. So this quality of support systems and the pre-existing subclinical or even clinical disorders and the personality temperament factors are the ones which make the difference how the child, child is going to adapt or function. So finally, we come to the last part of the presentation, how to tackle. Obviously, pre prevention, providing a natural environment for physical activities, healthy leisure activities and peer interaction. So lockdown tells us to keep physical distance, but that should not be a social distancing for children. They should be exposed to physical activities, healthy leisure time activities and peer interaction, preferably outdoor, of course, within the constraints of what the government or authorities uh, prescribed us, prescribed us uh, uh, COVID preventive aspects. Second is the development of alternative menu, menu with a diversity for uh, work. Uh, when a parent is complaining that the, my child is always playing with the, the mobile phone or uh, any digital devices. Many a time they are clueless or they are answerless when we ask them what alternative you have provided to the child. So it's very, very important to provide an alternate menu, menu with diversity. Depending on that diversity should be tailored for the child's temperament, interest and resources available. So these are two are very important. Providing a natural environment within the constraints of uh, uh, our uh, what the government or other is prescribed and development of alternative menu which is tailored for the child's needs. Of course, we can go on for relaxation training, life skills training. Uh, these are all preventive or resilience building, parent training with regard to since the time is limited, I will not go into what exactly we can do, but these are the things which we can uh, definitely plan for our students as a preventive strategies. Once they are identified, uh, the teachers should be identified health professionals, not only pediatricians, but health professionals of all uh, uh, domains, maybe other doctors, health practitioners, nurses, uh, everyone should be uh, have some basic training. Uh, uh, and definitely what is needed is professional assessment and management. I would emphasize that. Professional assessment, just a counseling or just a soothsaying is not enough. Professional assessment and management, some pathways should be made uh, for these children who are identified as having psychological stress stories, the scientific uh, assessment and management. And finally, each case will be unique and multiple factors will be operating. So it is not a single diagnosis in every child, multiple factors. So we'll just go back to the quickly go to the close case scenario just to emphasize the, the need of uh, understanding the multiple factors which I prefer to use the term formulation rather than diagnosis. For example, in scenario one, Rahul 15, then standard, who was a good student till recently, all on a sudden became angry, short-tempered, and refusing to attend the, he has become defiant, oppositional, threatening more. So this is a combination of temperament. What is the temperamental factor here? The temperamental factor is an fantastic traits. He was a perfection, he needed perfection, and he needed everything to be just right. And when that doesn't happen because of the environmental factors. It results in an adjustment disorder. And there is an even a suspicion whether he is going into develop a depressive disorder because the anger and the irritability, which was very, uh, very unbecoming of his previous personality, this could be a harbinger of development of a depressive disorder. So a formulation captures the situation better rather than tell, telling the child that the child has got an adjustment disorder. So temporal factors, adjustment disorder, may be progressing to a depressive disorder. Look at scenario two about the uh, the teenager girl who had food fights, excessive washing, etc. Here also she had an anxious avoidant temperament. Anxious avoidant temperament plus she developed an illness anxiety, excessive illness anxiety. Plus that is emerging into obsessive compulsive symptoms. So this is the formulation which will capture her problem. So already a child with anxious avoidant temperament developing illness anxiety and obsessive compulsive symptoms. And the scenario three, the last one, the 22 year old uh, young female, the BTEC graduate who is confused about what is her career. Formulation is the developmental demand. So at the age of 22, every person is likely to uh, go through this. What should I do after my graduation? So this is the normative stress, but this normative stress is overwhelming for her and she has going on to develop panic attacks, which is characterized by palpitation, breathlessness, and giddiness. This is a physical problem. 
so again look at this formulation that will uh, be a better that will give a better understanding of the predicament predicament of this young female aruna so so the individualized the individual condition the formulation should be managed specifically that is the important so one uh, panacea like counseling or this that is not individual problem should be identified they should be formulated and they should be managed specifically by professionals and finally the supportive role of i should emphasize the supportive role of family school and teachers and health workers including nurses can be so uh, crucial in this to educate the family about the need to be supported to the child liaison with school authorities and teachers how to how important it is to accommodate the child's needs um, especially children with some special needs like children with autistic disorders or developmental problems so i conclude uh, by this simple uh, five points the psychological responses to covid, COVID lockdown should be understood as our nervous system response to a change in environment so there is no blaming there is no uh, scapegoating so this is a very neutral and scientific way of looking at uh, the thing brain responses to change in a developing brain is responding a child's brain is developing its the developmental trajectory is uh, changing at every moment so it's a uh, something in movement it's a dynamic thing so a dynamic brain or a changing brain responds to very likely to responds to changes in the environment point number 1 point number 2 we need to understand healthcare workers uh, should understand that these responses are unique in each child depending upon the developmental stage the individual temperament of the child and pre-existing disorders and very importantly the quality of support system like family and school and the third we need to conceptualize the three the five important psychological disorders include stress related disorder that means adjustment disorders anxiety disorders depressive disorders sleep disruption and addictive disorders and point number four is always formulation formulation is better than diagnosis rather than category diagnosis will not will take away the understanding so better to go for formulations in understanding problems of students and finally apart from the general and specific intervention which should be done by the professionals support and accommodation from family the, the family and especially we are speaking about students um, extremely important for the family and the school to be Uh, accommodative uh, and flexible with regard to the emotional needs of the children and we need to develop a pathway of care to identify these children and take them for uh, they should get uh, access to pro- proper professional help thank you i, I am um, hope that i had confined myself to the time allotted thank you thank you sir students and now it's time for discussion if you have any questions you can clarify the doubts by unmuting your audio so there is one question from dr valsama joseph yes please uh, uh, what are the effects of lockdown on psychological aspects of parents due to children's continuous presence at home ah uh, parents are at a loss most parents are at a loss what to do Uh, so they were all we were all telling parents especially parents from nuclear family to have quality time with your children that will uh, take care of the child's emotional problems the need of the parent to be with the child for dealing with conditions like adhd the proximity approaches but now uh, the things have changed um, the proximity of the parents are not uh, accepted by children there's a lot of time together so we don't have an easy answer for this problem the only thing is that parents are very worried about the academic problem what is going are they going to lose an year people are talking about zero academic year so parents are an apprehensive lot uh, only thing is that uh, uh, there should not be uh, there should not be any conclusions without objectively assessing each child and each family uh, there cannot be a single uh, uh, response each child is unique each family is unique so when parents come across difficulty whether it is uh, uh, encouraging the child uh, to attend the online classes or whether it is relating to their finishing their online assessments or whether it is related to control of sleep time or digital devices it is highly individualistic we need to object that is what we do in we try to do in our clinic after the initial assessment we ask we give the second session to the parents exclusively ask the parents to come 
exclusively for the second session and they are given education first and then they are told about the behavioral strategies and third thing parents can effectively liaise with the school authorities to become more accommodative for example we had situations where uh, schools were giving back to back uh, programs for 7 8 hours in their uh, uh, enthusiasm to not to uh, uh, fall behind in academics uh, children are not able to their attention span cannot all eight hours of continuous teaching so some schools have changed their pattern uh, depending upon that so parents can be uh, educated they can be reassured uh, it's not a something which is unique for their child it is uh, by the entire student community uh, they can be effective uh, behavior therapists for the children uh, they can so it's an opportunity for parents to learn some good parenting based upon behavior strategies and they that can be effective lies uh liaison with the uh, school authorities also these are the things which we do and only time can tell uh, what ultimately whether parents become masters or they stand to lose out okay, thank you any further queries are there anything in the chat box i am not able to access the chat box any questions post your questions in the chat box students okay. sir one question uh, how to yes. handle a sleep cycle disruption from ah. dr vishal vk madam ah, so very uh, so very relevant question so sleep cycle disruption if it's an older child we need to a deal with the child himself or herself what a child means somebody a child who is studying in high school uh, or plus one plus two or beyond that so they need to uh, uh, there is an important to have an educational session about the need of a good sleep cycle um, that means at least 7 to 8 hours of continuous sleep in the night the sleep hygiene principles the sleep hygiene principles of sleep hygiene i am sure that most of you know what sleep hygiene is or otherwise i will leave it as a homework for you to the students can find it out as a homework sleep hygiene principles for all children we should communicate to them we should talk to them about the biology of uh, the biological clock sleep regulation they have some idea about what is uh, hypothalamus or pineal gland etc so teach them educate them and uh, tell them that it is for their own benefit they have to follow the sleep cycle if it's younger children uh, the strategy is different parents need to be taught about the sleep hygiene and parents need to be in control and they need to consistently firmly and consistently uh, implement the parental authority should be exercised to implement sleep hygiene principle for children who are uh, younger maybe uh, up the approximate during line is somewhere around till uh, uh, 12 years and if it is similar then there might be a need for medical evaluation if the initial sleep hygiene either um employed uh, by other parents or whether delivered directly to the child if it doesn't work out then one may need to find out uh, causes of insomnia or sleep disorder has to be properly assessed evaluated for a proper management are we if time permits we can have queries otherwise it's up to maria madam i think other we can wind up or continue hello sir there are... yes yes hello, sir. Madam. Uh, hello, madam. Uh, yeah hello sir the session was very uh, oh usha madam very... is there i i didn't see you okay you are uh, <laughs> yeah my video is off i think hello okay. yes ma'am sir the session was excellent and it was very realistic thank you and uh, covered uh, and covered all the uh, almost all the aspects which the present generation faces because of the lockdown thank you okay. stressing on how important it is to face this pandemic together dr vargis vipunus brings home the theme of today's webinar 
Thank you, sir, for talking about the mental health challenges uh, emerging from COVID-19 and emphasizing the importance of getting the conversation on student mental health to the forefront. Thank you once again, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Shall I leave? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Sir. Hello, sir. Now we move on to our next session. This situation is unprecedented and it is difficult to make sense of it. How do students respond to this? How to deal with it? We have Mr. C.G. Anthony sir guiding us to this with, with a session titled Minding the Minds of Students During COVID-19 Pandemic. Over to you, C.G. sir. Good afternoon, all. Good afternoon, sir. I mean, the impact of COVID-19 and the related psychological problems, the Varghese Punusara was very systematic and scientific in the present day. But I think that uh, am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Adin the Nei in the section of pair it in the minding the mind and the pair suggested the Arangilum. I will have the Putium and appreciate here. Aran and Aran Bora minding the mind. Nalu captured so I especially appreciate the brain behind that. Okay. Uh, uh, the principal Dr. Usha ma'am, Maria ma Miss, former principal Walsama ma'am, Matya faculties, uh, dear students. We are a nursing students, BSc nursing students, and related to our psychology. Mission Lion and Kaina Batu or Shamai to Paddy Pikin. When Yan Manslak like would regard him, nursing students in a Pathea might appreciate here a group up among students, among other students, nursing students, sort of Pathea appreciation, more than appreciation, respect here in the academic group up. Karanam, Udra de Karanam, one of our hard working mentality. Sidikimari uh, medical science wide Bentapeta almost Ella Kairingal, a very Padikino, and all that. So other than a Kayu over Kunda, other than even hard work here and Tayara. Randamate Kairim, these students serve what a self disciplined diet for the students are. Kerja nama le, apa assignment sum, apa demand sum, apa pressure, abad ini orang dah ya lom, adz timely, ini student sendiri orang ur proactive response kani kena ana, ini ur experience. So nursing students academically, they are hardworking, they have the resource, at the same time they are self disciplined. Ini ini rancang qualities ni kalau kurang ni apa attractive itu kerja ni. Even if one are a family centered I told a student son. If the other area would do I reckon a career options in the nursing in the career of a terrain at the level would do 30 to 40 percentage a career decision ever a motivating other out of family and family to do progress on the one a little family to do Nehatam undang mana mana lola anggrek itu ni korat ani, pala students um, ini nursing yang nak kerjakan terus ni dekat mana. Pih ini dua muda kerjakan orang korang dengar ni, ni nursing students ni pertiaga mai tak appreciate, ini pertiaga mai tak respect dia. Ini nama dia ni tapi section lain kerja kau. Ni ada satu activity la start yang nak anggrek ini dah. Orang ceria art terapi. Art terapi yang dapat orang bawa, nengar lagi ini lori paper. Orang 
ഒരു പേപ്പറും പെൻസിലും ഉണ്ടാകുമെന്ന് ഞാൻ പ്രതീക്ഷിക്കുന്നു ഹലോ നിങ്ങൾ എല്ലാവരും തന്നെ ഒരു പേപ്പറും പെന്നും എടുക്കുക അതിൽ ഞങ്ങൾ പി പി ടി ഇടുന്നുണ്ട് അതിൽ പറഞ്ഞിരിക്കുന്ന കാര്യങ്ങൾ നിങ്ങളൊന്ന് ചെയ്യുക നിങ്ങൾ ആ പേപ്പറിലേക്ക് അഞ്ച് കാര്യങ്ങൾ എഴുതണം അഞ്ച് കാര്യങ്ങൾ വരയ്ക്കണം ഒന്നൊരു വീടിന്റെ പടം വരയ്ക്കണം ഒരു ട്രീ ഒരു വാട്ടർ സോഴ്സ് സൺ ഓർ മൂൺ ആൻഡ് ആൻ ആനിമൽ സോ നിങ്ങളുടെ പേപ്പറിൽ യു ക്യാൻ ഡ്രോ എ ഹൗസ് എ ട്രീ എ വാട്ടർ സോഴ്സ് സൺ ഓർ മൂൺ ആൻഡ് ആൻ ആനിമൽ ക്ലിയർ ആണോ ഞാൻ പറയുന്നത് ക്ലിയർ ആണോ സ്റ്റുഡൻസും ഈ അഞ്ച് കാര്യങ്ങളൊന്ന് വരയ്ക്കുക നിങ്ങളുടെ ആർട്ടിസ്റ്റിക് സ്കില്ല് അസസ് ചെയ്യുക എന്നുള്ളതൊന്നും അല്ല ഉദ്ദേശം കേട്ടോ വെറുതെ ഒരു ആക്ടിവിറ്റി ചെയ്യുന്നു എന്നുള്ളതേ ഉള്ളൂ നിങ്ങൾ ഇത്രയും സമയം വളരെ തിയറിക്കൽ ആയിട്ട് വളരെ ഡെപ്തിലുള്ള ഒരു സെക്ഷൻ ആണ് അറ്റൻഡ് ചെയ്തത് ഒന്ന് റിലാക്സ് ചെയ്ത് go for this five drawings of an house tree sun or moon water and animal namaku oru 3 minute samayam kudi edukkam ഒരു വീട് വരയ്ക്കുക ഒരു മരം പിന്നെ ഒരു വാട്ടർ സോഴ്സ് സൺ ഓർ മൂൺ ആൻഡ് ആൻ ആനിമൽ വരച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞ ആരെങ്കിലും ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അത് നമ്മുടെ സ്ക്രീൻ ഷെയറിങ്ങിലേക്ക് ഇടാം ഒരു കോമ്പറ്റീഷൻ ഒന്നും അല്ല ഒരു ഫീൽ ഫ്രീ ചിലർ നല്ല ആർട്ടിസ്റ്റുകളാവും ചിലർക്ക് വര എത്ര പിടുത്തമില്ലാത്തവരുണ്ടാവും അതൊന്നും ഒരു പ്രശ്നമല്ല വരച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞവരുണ്ടോ വരച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞ ആരെങ്കിലും ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ നിങ്ങളുടെ ആ ചിത്രം ഒന്ന് ഷെയർ ചെയ്യാവും സ്ക്രീൻ ഷെയർ കൊടുക്കാവും
ആരെങ്കിലും ചിത്രം ഷെയർ ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ടോ അങ്ങനെങ്കിൽ ചിത്രം വരച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞു ഇനിയും ഇതൊരു ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞല്ലോ ഒരു വളരെ ലൈറ്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ആക്ടിവിറ്റിയിലേക്കാണ് നമ്മൾ പോയത് ഈ കോവിഡ് കാലഘട്ടത്തിൽ ചിലരവരുടെ പഴയ ഇഷ്ടങ്ങളിലേക്ക് തിരികെ പോയിട്ടുണ്ട് ഇതുപോലെയുള്ള ചിത്രം വരയിലേക്ക് പോയവരുണ്ട് കവിത എഴുത്തിലേക്ക് പോയവരുണ്ട് ഇപ്പോ വീട്ടിലെ പല സ്ത്രീകളും സ്ത്രീകൾ മാത്രമല്ല പുരുഷന്മാരും ഒക്കെ കുക്കിങ്ങിലേക്ക് പലതരത്തിലുള്ള കുക്കിങ് ട്രൈ ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഒക്കെ ഒരു പുതിയ നോർമൽസിയുടെ ഭാഗമാണ് ഞാൻ ജസ്റ്റ് അതുകൊണ്ട് നിങ്ങളെ ഒന്ന് വരപ്പിച്ചു എന്നേ ഉള്ളൂ പക്ഷെ നിങ്ങൾ ഈ വരച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന വീട് മരം വാട്ടർ സോഴ്സ് സൺ മൂൺ ആൻഡ് ആനിമൽ ഇതെല്ലാം നിങ്ങളുടെ ലൈഫ് എക്സ്പീരിയൻസുമായിട്ട് നിങ്ങളുടെ പേഴ്സണാലിറ്റി Uh, yes. that is uh, students uh, people from other languages are also attending the class can you please uh, ah, uh, speak okay. in english like that that i don't know that's why okay okay thank you okay sir thank you okay so uh, i just ask you to write uh, draw how tree water sun moon and animal this is mere an activity because uh, during this lockdown period uh, many have returned to their old artistic skills like learning music drawing and cooking many are trying cooking so that's a stress free activity to be connected when we are socially disconnected it is better to be connected with some of our aptitudes or some of our likes which we which we previously enjoyed so that is one thing the second thing if you go through your pictures your pictures is communicating your personality or your life experiences as dr varghese punnus had rightly mentioned why some students why some people are suffering more psychologically during this covid period it is because there is a difference in their personality in their uh, life experience in their family background in their uh, interpersonal relationship skill in their temperamental traits so if you go through your picture you can get an idea about your own personality or your own uh, life situation let us uh, get an insight so you have to compare your picture of house with this details i have presented in the screen some details like uh, see your house do your house has enough windows you just compare your picture do your picture of house has enough windows is there a sidewalk entry chimney etc so there is a connection between presence of windows and absence of windows if your picture has enough windows appropriate sizable windows it shows that you are maintaining good communication with others you are maintaining good interpersonal skills but if your house lacks windows or the windows are too small it means your communication is not up to mark you are not interacting with others properly you are preoccupied with 
yourself. That will add to your worries. So I'm just trying to connect your picture with your life, with your personality. Okay, it's not a final judgment. I know when I ask you to draw, you simply draw a picture of a house uh, without much preparation. But in art therapy, it's very clear if you draw without much preparation, then there is a connection with that art and your life. Okay, coming back to the explanation. So presence and absence of windows, uh, size of windows is very important. Then chimney. If you have drawn chimney, that's fine. But most of the houses nowadays doesn't have a chimney, so don't worry about that. Then you see the doorknob. Is your picture has a doorknob or the house doesn't have a door, a front door? If it doesn't have a front door, it shows you are not welcoming. Then now we will go to the next picture, that is tree. You can compare your picture of tree and the explanation I have given here. See, tree or plants always represent life and growth. See your tree, is it a representation of a blooming life? Is your trees have enough leaves? trunks, fruits. If your trees full of leaves, fruits, that shows your present life is happy. You are enjoying your present life. If not, if you're, you represent a tree with a single trunk and not enough leaves, that means you are facing some serious stress. You are feeling that loneliness. You are draining in many areas. So that is very important. If you have drawn a lifeless tree, it, it, if the tree doesn't show growth in it, you need extra help. You know, where Dr. Varghese Kunus has rightly said, there is no uh, one way of intervention in managing stress. If you need support, you have to ask for it. That's why I think, I hope uh, your teachers have arranged such a platform. Just to get connected with your inner life, just to con get connected with your stress, and if possible, try to ask for professional help if you really need it. That's why I just ask you to draw a picture of a tree and uh, if it's a, a tree uh, showing life, that means your life is flourishing. If the tree lacks roots, it's uprooted tree. That means you are suffering a lot in your present life. If it is a rooted tree, that means you are strong. There is a strong family supporting you. So likewise, you can compare the uh, roots of your tree, the leaves, fruits, and everything. Okay, otherwise, it uh, represents the lonely part of your life, the lack of support in your life. Then the location of the tree, that is very important. The location of a tree and your house, it's very important. Because if your tree is too close to your house and the position of tree is such a way that it is harming your, it may harm your house, that is also a danger signal. I hope, are you getting, are you getting me? Yes, so the position of tree is very important. 
whether the tree is rooted or not is important and trees with full of leaves fruits everything is connected with our present life now we are moving to uh, sun or moon you know if you are drawn a sun a picture of a sun that shows your relationship with your father because sun figure is father figure and see how close the house is to sun so it is close means you are too close with your father if the sun is away from your home that shows your relationship with your father are the rays is it a sad sun or a pleasant sun it all shows your relationship with your father so the two other pictures are moon moon represent mother and water is also uh, communicating that uh, your life the possibilities of your life if you have drawn a river near to your home that shows uh, you are thinking about more possibilities in future but if it is a small pond that means again that closeness uh, not enough possibilities so i'm just uh, interpreting uh, your uh, artistic picture with some psychological interpretation interpretation don't worry about my interpretation because i am not seeing your picture and uh, one thing is very important even though you have drawn the picture i have made some interpretation the final uh, understanding of the life experience of the artist or one who had drawn this picture depends on the explanation of the uh, person who had drawn the picture so when i ask why you have uh, drawn a tree very near to your home and you are explaining that uh, in my house there is a tree very near to my house that's why i have drawn the same position in this picture then there is no problem are you getting me so the final judgment of art therapy depends on the explanation from the subject subject means those who have uh, drawn the picture so i have uh, given a small practice is that okay hello yes sir okay sir okay sir any questions regarding the activity if you have drawn a picture and uh, in connection with my interpretation about your picture do you have any questions regarding the uh, tree house presence of sun water source any questions uh, uh, what about the elements elements which we have drawn pardon Anim animals uh, we have drawn the animals also ah okay okay i forget that okay ah, okay if you have drawn an animal and the animal is representing our energy level our ego level our aggressiveness our passive nature so if you have drawn an aggressive animal it may shows your passion your high energy at the same time only after discussing with you a psychologist can assess whether it shows your real aggressiveness if a person with a uh, large huge amount of aggressive instinct that may that person may show an aggressive animal may draw an aggressive animal so only with the uh, discussion with the subject uh, we can go for a right assessment but the interpretation is animal shows our energy level is it clear students a few attendees can share the image please take a photo using your smartphone and tell us we can give access to share the screen yes yes if i 
there is a possibility that's fine i think after the uh, interpretation it is difficult to share the picture because all are seeing the picture and uh, they may go for different interpretation okay if uh, if it's difficult to share the picture we will go for the uh, next aspect of my presentation can i go Yes, sir. There is no questions in the chat box. Okay. Okay. So, normally, uh, we just uh, uh, went through an activity of doing an art therapy, in which we try to represent our present life in an artistic form. you know the third part of this is more than assessment and interpretation if you engage your time in some artistic activities that will give a lot of relaxation and release of your pent up emotions so when you engage in music art dancing singing songs cooking gardening whatever activity you are in that act through that activity you can transform your pent up emotions pent up feelings and pent up especially pent up negative experiences through that artistic process so you can try that many are trying and that is a better solution to manage stress during this period so i am going to my next presentation to manage stress or to handle problems of this present life there is a wonderful therapy called gestalt therapy in psychology while you learn psychology in first sem uh you have you all have learned about perception principles of perception all are aware about that so based on perception principle there is a theory called gestalt therapy you know after this program you can go through the various steps of gestalt therapy that will be very beneficial to handle stress especially to manage different emotions like anger anxiety uh, sadness loneliness whatever emotions you want to manage this is a better therapy um, to escape from negative emotions so i am presenting one aspect of gestalt therapy so please view this visual then try to interact with me i am sharing a visual uh sir dr bindu has shared her screen oh, okay <laughs> okay i will come back to that after seeing this visual i i will come back to that okay okay sir okay Can you see this picture? So all of you can see this picture. Yes or no? No. No. 
डॉक्टर बिंदु प्लीज स्टॉप शेयरिंग नो सर नो नो सर कम सर प्लस I think I think now it's visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Yes. E picture will come on the. Yes. 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 हलो हलो सर इट इज नॉट वेसिबल नाउ सर नो नो You have seen that picture. Ah, okay, sir. Ah, what you have seen? Sir, uh, in the chat box, it is written as a young woman, a very young lady. Ah, Then, uh, very, very young lady. Then, ah, uh, uh, very ah. Uh, From Did you see Maria, a girl? A girl. And, uh, and Simola Shog, a young woman. Young woman, okay. Manu Prithi, a young, young girl. Okay. Sneha, a young lady. Okay. Then Binda Elizabeth, a young woman. Okay. So you please watch it once again. Are you uh, seeing? Are you seeing now? Can you see the picture? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please watch. All of you, please watch. प्रायमी You can see a ninety-year-old woman. See the eyes of the woman, mouth, nose, chin. Those who have seen young woman, are you able to see the old one? Again, back to young woman. Young woman, her eyes, nose, chin, ear, neck. Yes. 
So now we move back to the black and white picture. See, it's the same picture, but the picture consists of both a young one and an old one. Hello? Hello, oh, sir. How many of you have seen both young and old one? Yes, Manisha. Yes, three. Three participants. Five. Yes. So your perception has improved. Ten participants. Twelve. Yes. Yes, so you have changed your perception and you got a full picture of that visual, both young and old. Still, Dr. Usha can see only young girl. Ah, that is a speciality. Uh, Dr. Usha is all maybe preoccupied with youth and uh, uh, young people, that's why. You are always among young people. Uh, maybe because of that, you are you can see only uh, youthful pictures. But the picture consists of both a 90-year-old woman and a young woman. Yes. So I hope I am also able to see only young lady. Yes, Dr. Bindu John is also able to see only young lady. So maybe you lack one part of the perception. The picture certainly consists of two personalities, one an old woman and uh, another one a young one. I think many of you will agree with me because already around 10 participants have seen both personalities, young and old. Maybe I need to improve. <laughs> So Dr. Bindu is sharing an insight that I have to improve my perception. Yes. Okay. So coming back to gestalt therapy. Gestalt therapy clearly stating that we have to see this life in his wholeness, not as parts. Many times we see life part by part. When you see life part by part, we will not be happy. At times we are happy, at times we are sad. Because uh, doctor has said in the beginning, the beginning stage of lockdown, students are happy. Then in the second phase and third phase, they are not happy, many are not happy, many are struggling, their stress has increased, fight between parents and students increased. Now parents continuously criticizing children, saying that almost uh, all time you are preoccupied with the mobile internet, so conflict has increased. But if you see the entire phase of COVID-19, especially in connection with the health field, there are some blessings in disguise. We used to say there are some blessings in disguise, especially in the field of health. You know, I heard of, we all know about universal precautions. Uh, when we uh, faced HIV-AIDS, HIV-AIDS has created a big change in the field of health by pinpointing the importance of universal precautions. So that is a big change. The same way COVID-19 has created a lot of 
constructive changes in health field especially health hygiene has improved personal hygiene of people have improved and more than that dignity of people in the field of health has improved a lot i'm sure in the coming years the most wanted professional professionals will be from the health field so when you see a problem in its wholeness our perception will change so when you change your perception from seeing things part by part to an wholeness certainly our life will change that's why i have presented this picture as you said many of us in the beginning have seen only the young one but some after clear perception they could able to see both old and young now i like to share my personal experience in this regard you know i completed msw in the year 94 and my father is a businessman and at the same time he used to drink a lot of alcohol in uh, 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 disease aspect if i could say he is an alcoholic in all the sense he is an alcoholic he used to drink a lot of alcohol uh, create a lot of trouble after drinking alcohol i know many of the students listening to me may have such experience at home uh, they are facing uh, problems in the family relationship conflicts between parents some are suffering the problems of separation economic crisis problem of alcoholism you know when they are studying they are going to colleges they are in the hostel so they can keep away from these problems for time being but now again back to real problems i can understand that the same way my family i have suffered a lot in my family because of alcoholism of my father you know when i completed studies he has presented uh, a, uh, an account before me the money he has spent for my studies so he asserted that i have to pay the entire money back then only i can proceed with my msw profession so for that i have to force i was forced to join his business so after msw instead of working with people i have to follow his business that was totally a negative experience for me i hate business i don't know why i hate business maybe because my father is a businessman so i have to uh, do marketing daily has to visit 20 25 shops so one day in front of mg university my bike uh, met with an accident and uh, i almost uh, lost the heel part of my right leg and admitted in medical college hospital for almost 60 70 days so you know what happened each day my father will come to hospital around the evening he will come to hospital and uh, i was helped to my my by one of my friend his name is vijay that time he was working in a private bus so every evening he will come to hospital and uh, taking care of me supporting me so my father he used to come in the evening and daily he will he start abusing me uh, he lost a lot of money because of me likewise he uh, made a lot of abusive words and he will went back so each day i suffered this and one day i asked my friend i asked my friend vijay why my father is coming daily and criticizing and abusing me 
Why can't he come once in a week? Because he is repeating the same thing daily. Instead of that, why can't he come once in a week and do the negative things on me? For that, my friend Vijay replied, Siji, he is coming daily not only to blame you, but also after that, daily he is giving enough money for meeting your needs. I don't know to what extent you are getting me. My father is coming daily, blaming me, verbally abusing me, and I perceived only that part, that negative part of my father. By, but my friend who hasn't studied any psychology, he perceived the other side of my father and he is correcting me, Siji, your father is not only coming and uh, coming for blaming you, but also to feed you with the economic need or to um, supply money to meet your needs. See, that is the wholeness of life. Yes, my father is a businessman, he is an alcoholic, he physically abused me, verbally abused me at the same time. Even though he is an alcoholic, he tried to support me financially. So, just our approach will always help us to clear our perceptual diversions, clear our perceptual problems and help us to see this life in a holistic way, to perceive this life in its fullness. When you perceive, when you start perceiving this life in its fullness, your thinking will be different. When your thinking will be different, your feeling will be different. When you, your thinking, when your perception is different, your thinking, your feeling will be different. And this three will help you to live a peaceful and happy life. That is what is just start approach teachers in our life. So I used to follow this approach in my life whenever I face with a crisis. And whenever, when I do family counseling, I try to apply this gestalt therapy, which has helped a lot of families in facing their life more happily and with more hope. So today, in this brief presentation of minding our mind, I request you to apply whatever psychology you have learned in your personal life. You know, within the 60 hours of psychology learning, you are learning a lot of theories, perceptional theories, learning theories, learning about thinking, formation of thinking. But if you start applying psychology in your life, certainly your life will be different. So that's my personal message to you. I hope you understand the importance of having a holistic approach in life. So with that, I end up my presentation and now the space is open for discussion, interactions, comments and sharings. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Again, uh, uh, students, you can clarify your doubts.
हेलो So there is one question in the chat box from Kriba yes. Francis. It is continuous online classes causes headache, eye pain, etc. What is the remedy for it? Yes. Uh, certainly, you know, there is no shortcut. Because uh, my elder daughter, she is studying in CMS college in English department. She is also facing the same uh, physiological problems like backache, uh, problems with the sleep and all. Uh, one thing, you know, we always try to find a balance between our work, rest and recreation. That is very important. A balance between work, rest and recreation. So, in this new normal, you have to find a balance. Now, minimum, you have to do 15, 20 minutes of exercise, yoga, meditation. Uh, there is a new uh, concept called mindful meditation or body scan meditation. You can refer the internet. Mindful meditation or body scan meditation. It's very useful if you go through body scan meditation, you can communicate with each part of your body. Likewise, you communicate with a friend. You can communicate with each part of your body and try to understand the pain feelings of each body part. And you can give a console, you can give a support and energy back to your body part. So, in body scan meditation, you communicate with your body and you uh, stimulate and support your body part. So that is a one way of body scan meditation. So whatever it is, try to do 15-20 minutes of yoga, meditation or exercise. Then uh, uh, good sleep within the available schedule. That is very important. Five hours, good. But go for a sound sleep. Many of us are doing, many of the students are doing, they create a balance between work and recreation. But don't give much importance to rest. But the, this three part is very important. So if you create a balance, you can uh, go ahead with a healthy life. So that's the answer to that. Dr. Preeta has raised her hands. Uh, please unmute her. Please unmute Dr. Preeta. Already done, but she is responding. Dr. Preeta, I can ask now. Dr. Preeta, you can talk now. Uh, Madam, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Sir, um, about the answer therapy, uh, sir. If the student they are not an artist, then is it possible to practice this art, art therapy? Ma'am, I am not getting you. So if the, about the art therapy, okay. if they are not an artist, then is it possible to practice it? Ah, yes, that's a good question. You know, if you are an artist, it is difficult to uh, 
go for a real assessment or interpretation because artists they give always give importance to artistic uh, part of the picture so they with the awareness they can draw but if you don't have artistic skill then you will easily project your unconscious conflicts or your life experience so uh, answer to your question is yes uh, if you are not an artist then your picture will give a natural inclination towards your life experience so the artist is not possible okay. artist is uh, somewhat difficult but the you know i told you the main step in art therapy is after the picture uh, the uh, the psychologist will raise some questions will start some interaction and the subject give response to that so based on the response based on the response of the subject we will go for a conclusion so that part is important whether you are an artist or not uh, the the picture communicate some uh, some clues to psychologist and he will raise the clues and the subject will respond and then we can go for a conclusion that interaction part is the uh, deciding thing okay thank you sir thank you there is one question from mariam uh, sir there is one question from shanu mariam Uh, she is asking uh, is there an insurance is needed to change our perceptions in our life is there a... an insurance is needed to change our perceptions in our life an insurance is needed okay okay i understood because i shared an incident so she is asking whether such a real uh, incident or maybe a negative experience maybe she is assuming that a negative experience is needed i don't think so uh, because life is full full of events life is full of events uh, we are not lacking any uh, events in our life so uh, events people different personalities different situations conflicts crises uh, life is full of uh, crises opportunities challenges so uh what is the main thing is without knowing about perception principle without knowing about just on principle yes we are changing our perception otherwise how can we survive in this world that is one answer to her question uh, there is no need of specifically learning just our principle to change our perception people are changing their perception uh, so that they can survive in this life that is one answer second part is with awareness so if you know just our principle if you learn more about just our principle with awareness when you are applying just our principle in your life you will be more relaxed you will be more self satisfactory then the the, uh, the we uh, use two terms like adjustment and adaptation adjustment will not give much satisfaction but adaptation will give satisfaction so without awareness without any critical events we are changing our perception then we say it is adjustment but with awareness we are applying just our principle uh, we will move to adaptation that will give more satisfaction sir uh, so another question uh, from nasia it is yes, she is asking uh, when planning a day especially study planning after distraction from anything she can't get back to the time schedule uh, she is asking is there any tip for that okay uh, so she is asking about distraction uh, one thing is the ability to control or manage life is the key so uh, when you are doing something and i, I heard the name as shania okay shania so shania when you are doing something very seriously 
Sir, if someone is disturbing you, what will be your response? If you are seriously engaged in uh, one activity and your uh, brother or your parent, if when they are disturbing you, how you will respond? You say, you used to say, I'm engaged in an important activity. Please don't disturb me. I will be busy for the next one hour. So that's the way you prevent people's disturbance or outside disturbance. The same way you can control, you, you should or you are able to control your thought. You have to communicate with your thought. You consider your thought as a friend, a lovable friend. Sometimes a loving friend will disturb you. Then you say, no, I am busy. Uh, in this particular day from 2 to 4, I will be busy, so don't call me. Your friend will obey you. The same way you communicate with your thoughts, with your distractions. You have to communicate. Then you can come back to your preoccupation or you can come back to your serious work. You know, uh, people are asking for tips. Tips are available. Number of tips are available. But we will not try it. We just try for one or two days, then we skip. But you make a habit, habit of communicating or interacting with your thoughts. Then you can control your or manage your thoughts. When you are able to communicate, control and manage your thoughts, you can easily control and manage your life. So that's the basic thing. Uh, so, uh, so one question from Alfia Maka. That okay. is, uh, she's asking a uh, few warning signs of social media addiction that we usually ignore. Warning signs of? Social media addiction. Okay, warning signs of social media addiction. Okay, whatever addiction you're undergoing or you're experiencing, all addictions have some common symptoms, whether it's uh, internet, social media, uh, alcoholism, drug addiction, shopping addiction, cooking addiction, whatever it is, all addictions have mainly two to three common symptoms. The first symptom is physical dependency. What is physical dependency? Without that particular thing, you are not physically happy. For example, an alcoholic. Without alcohol, the alcoholic is not physically comfortable. That is physical addiction. So without social media, you are not physically okay. Then you have addiction. So that is physical dependency. You have to check out that. For example, you take an assignment for coming five hours. I won't get connected with the social media. Take a decision. For the next five hours, I won't get connected with the social media. If you can manage that five hours without any physical discomfort, you are not an addict. If not, you have addiction. So physical check for physical dependency. Second one is psychological dependency. Yes, you can manage uh, five hours without social media. Then you are physically okay. But are you psychologically okay? That means you are not using media for next five hours, but you are always thinking, oh, now it's three hours, now it's four hours, I have to wait for one more hour. So you are preoccupied. Even though you are not connected with social media, you are psychologically preoccupied with social media. That means you are psychologically dependent on social media. So physical dependency and psychological dependency are the core symptoms of any addiction. 
sir another question uh, how how we can apply gestalt principles in emergency situation or events uh, and is it need uh, does it need any practice to improve our judgment power and uh, she is also asking is it possible then one more question how students can improve their affirmations yes so uh, regarding gestalt you know uh, in emergency situation is it possible to apply gestalt principle that's a good question but the thing is you know you know the capacity of brain i think you may heard of uh, the term called neuroplasticity the ability of brain to change at any time okay so when you learn a new concept and you are trying to practice it the brain will easily learn it that is the ability of brain then it will be a habit so at any crisis it will easily come to you so that, that is the uh, capacity potential of our brain to change uh, to, to change means unlearn old things and learn new things so when you learn a new thing and make it a habit even in front of crisis naturally it will help you that is the answer to your question regarding gestalt therapy and the next question can you repeat which is the uh, next how students can improve their affirmations oh okay affirmation you know affirmation there is a theory called transactional analysis you can refer transactional analysis uh, ta is called ta and in ta the psychologist uh, used to say uh, there are many types of affirmation one is positive affirmations negative affirmation uh, conditional affirmation unconditional affirmation among this the most important affirmation is self affirmation self stroke you may have seen the movie uh, i think it's in 3 idiot in 3 idiot a movie uh, amir khan used to say uh, all is well all is well i am good i am okay so that is self affirmation stroking oneself that is very important don't wait for others to stroke you because all are busy all are worried so you go for self stroke self affirmation for example when you are using uh, internet to study for 3 hours continuously your father may attack you for 3 hours you are wasting time you are cheating us you are not spending time for learning you are checking something else maybe in the last 5 uh, uh, minutes you may check uh, a whatsapp message but for 2 hours uh, 50 minutes you are preoccupied with your study but father gave a negative stroke don't worry about that 